Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And you know, I'm a big Fast and Furious fan. I mean, I would go as far as to say that you could probably call me like borderline fanatic. I get truly excited for these movies. Paul Walker's death five and a half years ago legitimately bummed me out for like two damn weeks. It was bad. I had trouble going back and re-watching all the films leading into the seventh movie. And even the seventh movie, I got teary-eyed as hell at the end of it because I'm like, ah, Paul, no, ah, you know, I mean, they retired him out nicely. I felt really good about that. I was really happy about that. I thought it was a really solid movie and I would have loved to seen him continue with the franchise. But, you know, hey, listen, uh, sh it, it, stuff happens. But that being said, I'm still a gigantic fan of the franchise. I love Fast and Furious 8. I thought it did a good job at keeping it going while uh, keeping kind of Paul Walker at bay. And I really feel that uh, th what they're going to do with Hobbs and Shaw is going to be not only fun, but funny. And it's going to be a great deal of fun to watch that movie hit a billion dollars. But this is this is kind of one of the things I saw coming. Now, uh, one of the things that Fast and Furious franchise has done is it takes the villain and turns him into the hero. It really does. It oftentimes puts them up against someone else who's worse. And then they're just kind of there because they have to, with the exception really of Deckard Shaw. I mean, Shaw, from what we know right now. From what we know right now about him, he was acting on his own in, ep in episode seven, really number seven. He was acting on his own to fight back against the, the coma of his brother, uh, who was the villain in the sixth movie. But then at the seventh movie or the eighth movie, he kind of showed up. He showed up as a good guy. His brother showed up as a good guy and they helped take out Charlize Theron and Tormund in his best role since, <laughs> since Game of Thrones. I mean, come on. He had the same look and everything. Just give him give him some uh, some some giant's milk. Right. Anyway, the point is Fast and Furious has a tendency of taking a bad guy who survives and making them good. And I and I said this when I saw the movie last year or two years ago now that we would probably get Charlize Theron as a good guy. She's going to take the last couple films and she's going to be turned. We're going to find out there's an even bigger player above them. That's calling the strings. And we've already kind of heard some tidbits about that from what to expect from fast and furious eight and nine or nine and 10. And that's even probably going to be established in Hobbs and Shaw when it comes out this year, uh, what's going to be the bigger and badder aspect of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Charlize Theron makes an appearance as cipher in Hobbs and Shaw considering, well, well, this Universal considers a Furious Cipher spinoff. Yeah, kind of called that one. I mean, maybe not to the extent of her having a spinoff, but I definitely was like, they're going to bring her back. Charlize Theron was a good bad guy in the in the movie. She was a very good villain in the film. And for her to be in her own spinoff, she would have to kind of move over to being good. But here's an issue with that, though, before we jump into it. Here's an issue. She killed Helena. Can you come back from that? I mean, sure, you know, Shaw killed Han in, in, in Tokyo Drift, but we didn't learn that until the, the mid credit sequence in, in Fast and Furious 7 a few years down the road. And so that's when we knew how Han died, but then he became part of the team, kind of, in a movie later. So, I mean, forgiving and forgetting seems to be the nature of family, right? So there's there's clearly elements of that at play here. So again, but this is different. I mean, you know, Dom saw the mother of his child get gunned down while being on the other side of bulletproof glass, merely f half a foot away. That sucked. I didn't like that part of the movie, if I'm being honest with you, but it, you know, made sense. Anyway, it says with eight films under their belt so far, Universal Pictures, Fast and Furious remains arguably the biggest non-Disney franchise still going on in cinemas today. Uh, that and like Jurassic World, really. Uh, but this summer, the spinoff feature Hobbs and Shaw marks the studio's first attempt to step beyond the main series. And a report at THR indicates that this very much intends to find a way to keep the momentum going. Yeah, obviously. Look, there's been a big problem with Vin Diesel and his attitude. He's very protective over the Fast and Furious franchise. I don't blame him. He's been around since the beginning. And ever since Paul Walker died, you could tell he's really, really, really capable, you know, working on it and making sure he's the one who's in charge. Um, and also I kind of feel that, that with Riddick in 2013 kind of dying off and, and they haven't talked about any kind of new Riddick property since then. And it's been six years is probably another reason. As I've mentioned before with the rock in regards to Hobbs and Shaw, he doesn't have a franchise of his own. 
So this is his franchise. Yeah, he's sharing it with Jason Statham, but he's not sharing it with a whole other ensemble of people. He can do that. He has no problem with that. This is kind of the same thing, but for Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel is Fast and Furious. He is Dominic Toretto. It's been nearly 20 years since the movie came out. By the time the series ends in 2021, it will be 20 years and 10 films. Crazy, right? Crazy that they're doing this. Yet Star Wars is still getting a three-year break because you can't tell good stories. It... I won't, whatever. Anyway, the report indicates that the studio is trying to figure out how to grow the franchise into a Marvel Studios-esque behemoth, i.e. spinning off key characters and following tangents that move away from the original core elements of Vin Diesel and Fast Cars. The report says here, the studio is exploring other ideas, including a female-fronted Fast and Furious spinoff built around Charlize Theron's character Cypher from The Fate of the Furious. The question for Universal says a rep with important talent in the film, how do you broaden the franchise? How do you Avengers it, Avengersize it? What I love here is how do you broaden the franchise? That's a solid pun right there, sir. Or madame. I'm not too sure what your gender identity is, and I don't quite care. But you make a good point. How do you broaden the franchise of the Fast and Furious? Well, you, you, you it's difficult. And we're going to learn if it works this particular year. But the thing is, you got to give the fans what they want. Fast and Furious is nothing if not fan service. A hundred percent fan service. But then again, I do love the saying that once you write a sequel, you are now in the business of fan service. Game of Thrones is currently going through this problem right now because people have different expectations. Fast and Furious has not had that problem yet because they, quite frankly, just go bigger and crazier every time. And it doesn't give the audience any time to stop and think about the logistics of the situation, considering the fact now that the, the Fast and Furious movies contain nothing but superheroes, right? Dominic gets shot in Fast and Furious 6, doesn't phase him from fighting Jason Statham later on, or, or jumping off of his car across... <laughs> a freeway over a ravine to catch Letty as she's flying off the other direction and the momentum doesn't stop them both dead in their tracks and then fall to their death. No, 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 no. They, they land on the hood of another car uh, to soften their fall. They've become superheroes and I don't care one damn bit. I don't care one damn bit. But that's the question though, is, is how would, how would this franchise make it work? How would this franchise do that? And it's, it's, it's really simple. Charlize is working for somebody else. That's how you open the door, right? And you have the other women in the franchise, Michelle Rodriguez. Uh, crap, Gal Gadot's dead. Helena's dead. Man, they like to kill women in Fast and Furious, don't they? I expect there to be lots of Mary Sue articles about that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's true. Do they have anyone else right now? Do they have? No. No, they really don't. So, I mean, Gina Carano died. In number six, so did Gal Gadot. Uh, yeah, no, they got, uh, I mean, you could say Jordana Brewster, and I heard she's coming back for the last two films. So you could do Letty and, uh, and, and, uh, was, uh, Maria? I forget her name right now, but Jordana, Jordana, Jordana Brewster could be in it, and they could be tracking down Cypher. Just keep in mind, Letty did leave, uh, and go work for the bad guys in number four in order to get them off of Dom. So there's that. She was doing some work to get them off a of dom. Uh, so, you know, there's a. Uh... Oh no, no no she was getting them off a of dom. She hit her head and then they kind of told her. I forget again. There's like a lot of movies here. Uh, nine by August. Anyway, they're gonna make look. They're going to make Letty. Uh, they're they're going to make Cipher the good guy, similar to what they did with Shaw. It doesn't matter that that Cipher killed off one of the other the other you know ancillary members that popped up and popped up in number five and died in number eight. Uh, that doesn't matter at all. They're going to uh, bring her around and make her part of the team. You know, family. Never mind. She killed Dom's baby mama. Right. But she's going to be under duress and it's going to be working for some. Oh, Nathalie Emmanuel. I forget. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pharaoh. Was that her name? I, I got to watch the movies again. So she's around still. So you got, you could, you could bring them. You could bring Michelle Rodriguez, Nath Nathalie Emmanuel, uh, and, and, and Jordana Brewster and have them be the core female team that goes up against Cypher for some reason. And then, and then make Cypher the good guy. It's just, you know, what? there's a lot of ways they could go about it quite frankly, but that's probably going to be what they're going to do. And you know what, if they play it up, it could work. 
it could really, really, really work. And I would laugh my ass off if they do it and it hits a billion dollars. Because here's the thing. The Fast and Furious franchise doesn't pander. Not publicly. They don't publicly pander to anything. They really do keep it uh, very focused on the characters, on the story, on the event of seeing the movie. And that's what they do. And I think that works out okay. But I think we're going to see more from Charlize Theron and Hobbs and Shaw. I think there's going to be a tie-in. And I think they're going to use that to, to segue into number nine. And then I think we're going to get something from her after number 10, probably. Because they want to keep it going. It's been a billion-dollar franchise since number seven. So Universal's like, well, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Anyway, your thoughts, your opinions, let me know down below in the comments. Do you think that this is a good idea? Do you think that this is a bad idea? What's your favorite Fast and Furious movie? Let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day. Don't forget to support the channel on Patreon. And